So So Lounge. Today, we are going to be cutting out pattern pieces. Now, just as a refresher, this is the pattern we're going to be making, which is Butterick 4498 Vintage Pattern from 1996. And if you watched the last video, you recall that we need pieces one and five to make dress B, which is here. And in case you're wondering, this is the fabric we're going to be using to make this dress. Now, start unfolding your pattern pieces. And it looks like I have already cut this one out. Uh, thankfully, I cut it out in size 16. So, um, my pieces are cut out. If yours are not, no worries. And um, I need one and five, and they're both on top, thankfully. So, those are ready to go. If you are making a different design, then you would need to unfold um, the pieces that you need and cut them out. Now, as I've mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of the highlighting system to keep track of what you need. Now, you can't always see highlighter on um, these tissue papers, so a red felt tip pen works or whatever you want. I'm gonna just circle these two. They're already cut out, but to just give you an idea. And apparently I didn't finish because they've still got the full length of the pattern piece. So I'm gonna show you how to cut these out and then we'll also go over some of the markings on the pattern piece while we're looking at it. And let's get started. Since the pattern pieces for dress B are already cut out, I need pieces one and five, and they're already done, I'm going to cut out the bottom part of the dress, the skirt for dress A, which is the one with the drop waist, just so you remember. It's just so I can show you how to cut out patterns. Now, there's a thick line on the outside, and as you can see, there's, there's different sizes marked here. So the 16 is a thick line, the 14 is the dash and dot line, and then the 12 is the dash line. So you wanna go with whichever line corresponds with the size that you're making. And the good thing about these multi-size patterns is that when, let's say that your waist is a little bit bigger than the measurements on the pattern piece, you can make the bigger waist and then taper it into the smaller hips, or if you're, you really need a much bigger waist, and then you just taper it in to whichever line corresponds best with most of your measurements. Since I'm just pretty much a straight 16, we're just gonna cut out along the line for the 16. And we're cutting on the outside of this line because if you start cutting on the inside of the line and you go a little wonky, then you're going to end up making your pattern pieces a little bit smaller. And it's just kind of a good habit to get into cutting on the outside of the line. Now, when you get to these little notches, I'm gonna notch those out. So I'm just gonna cut across this extra and I'm going to make a big triangle. And then I'm gonna finish cutting the top of this pattern piece along this side still on the outside of the line. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna notch out, I'm gonna finish cutting out these notches. Except I'm making them reverse notches so they're not going in. You can cut them in, some pattern companies tell you to cut them in. I don't, I think it's easier to match everything up if um, they're coming to the outside and when you cut out the fabric, it's easier to see where that side notch is. And then we're gonna continue on this side. Now, these are what the notches mean. So as you can see, this is this this is the back of skirt A, and you're gonna be cutting two of this. And these are the, the notches, and two notches mean a side seam. So when you've got two notches, you know that's a side seam, and that's gonna go to another side. Now, if you look over on this side of the pattern, you can see that there are three notches. Three notches mean center back. So you want to cut out the same big chunk of pattern. And then we'll go back in and cut out the individual little triangles. That's me. And now they are ready to go. As you can see, and when you look at the pattern piece, you'll immediately know, oh, that's the back. It's got three triangles. So we're gonna cut out this side piece. 
on the outside line. It doesn't have to be totally perfect because you are gonna be going over this again with your fabric scissors as you cut out the fabric, but you wanna get it as close to the line as you possibly can. So continue cutting out your pattern pieces and then we will move on to the next step. Once you have your pattern pieces cut out, we're gonna go over to the ironing board and we're gonna press them. Because this has been in an envelope for a long time, there are ridges in it. It is not gonna lay flat completely once we pin it to the fabric. And you want the pattern to be as close to the fabric as possible and ironing helps achieve that. Now I have my iron on a wool silk setting, which is kind of the medium setting, and I have turned off the steam. So make sure the steam's turned off. That is really important because the last thing you want to do is soak your pattern and then have parts of it tear off. So to get started, you just want to quickly and very lightly press over your pattern pieces. And it's not a long process, you just kind of do it real quick. And as you can see, just doing that is going to make this pattern piece lie a lot smoother. And you want to just go around the whole pattern, especially these little corners where you're going to be sewing um, the shoulder seams together. You want to make sure that's a real nice crisp corner because that's really important to keep straight for that part of the dress. So as you can see, it's nice and smooth. My corners are pointy. Oops, that one's still not 100% pointy. Got kind of messed up when it was folded. Let me press that one more time. Okay. Keep pressing all your pattern pieces until they are done, and then we will move on. Now that your pattern pieces are all ironed and smooth and lying flat, we're gonna go over some of the additional information that is printed on the pattern. That's gonna be helpful for you to determine if the one you cut out is truly gonna fit you the best. To get started, we're gonna look at other information that is useful, that is printed on the pattern that is not really anywhere else. Now, the centerfold is gonna be on the front. So this is the front of the dress. There's no seam down the front. That means it has to be placed on a centerfold. So you can see that marking here. And then if you move up to the neckline, there's a note that this seam should be sewn at 3 eighths of an inch. So that's one of those times when you're not gonna be using the 5 eighths of an inch because it's otherwise mentioned. Same for the armhole, that's another 3 eighth inch seam. And then if we move down, to the center of the bodice, there is that circle with the cross in it. And then that's gonna give you the measurement here at the bust line for the different sizes, depending on which seam allowance you sew. Well, let's zoom in on that a little bit and a little bit more. Okay, so you can see that in a size 12, this bust point here and the circumference going around the pattern is going to be 37 inches. Now, let's go back to the pattern envelope and we're gonna look at those measurements that are on the pattern. So if you go to the size 12, the actual physical measurements, and that's with a tape measure type, are going to be 34 inches. So that means that this dress is gonna be three inches looser than your actual bust measurements. Now I'm gonna be wearing the size 16, which is 41 inches. And if we go back to the pattern envelope, the bust measurement is 38. So that is another three inches at the bust. And at this point, I kind of have to decide, okay, is this the size that I really wanna make or do I wanna make it a little bit tighter through the bust I'm gonna be wearing this dress in New Orleans and eating a lot of uh, seafood. So no, I am not gonna make this tighter. I'm perfectly happy with this amount of ease. And as we mentioned earlier, this is the ease, this is the extra looseness that's gonna be factored into the pattern. So most patterns will have this information on them, 
somewhere. So just go look for it and then you can decide, you know, do I really wanna make the 16 or because my bust is 38 inches, I'll only have one inch of ease if I make it in the size 14. So that's something for you to think about when you're making patterns and that's a different way that you can um, change it up and get the fit that you really want depending on the design and the way you like to wear it. To continue down the pattern, there is an indication here and this is where the natural waistline would be on this dress. And you can see that that looks kind of close to the bust start up here. Natural waist is gonna be the narrowest part of your body. So it may not actually be the waistline that you're used to wearing things at. Um, I love low-waisted stuff. I do not like things up around my waist because they make me feel too tight and remind me of when I was a little kid and had to wear these dresses with these waistbands that were always squeezing me and as you may have realized I'm all about comfort in clothing um, even if it is you know something I'm making myself. So if you keep moving down the pattern you can see that this is the line you would cut off if we were going to make A. These circles correspond with the circles that are on the top of the um, dropped skirt pattern so you'd be matching those up. We're not worrying about that now. Keep moving down. And at this point, this is going to be the hip line. So this marking indicates that at a size 16, the ease through the hips is going to be 44 and a quarter inches. Now, let's go back to my pattern envelope. And we can see that the hip is 40. So that's four and a half, four and a quarter inches at of ease through the through the hips of the skirt. Totally fine with me. This is a loose summer dress and that's kind of the look I want. And continue down to the very, very bottom of the pattern. And you can see a note down here. It says, cut off for B hem two inches, lengthen or shorten here. So this dress has a two inch hem, which means that, I'm gonna line this up on this these are all inches. So that means that the actual hem of the dress is going to be up here because that's about two inches. And that if you are looking at the length, the finished length, on the inside of the instructions, as we talked about earlier. So we know that the finished length of B is going to be 36 and a half inches from the neckline down to the hem. Let's say that I'm tall, which I'm not, I'm 5'5", five five, but let's say I'm tall and I want my skirt to be longer because that's gonna be a little too short for me. This is where you would add that extra length. So you get a piece of paper and say, you know what? I like this length of the skirt, but I still need to hem it two inches. So then you get a piece of paper and you add two inches to the bottom, you taper out that seam, you keep this one square, and you just add it on. And then when you cut out your fabric, you're gonna have the length you want and not have to guess. And just a quick look at the back pattern, you can see there is a line here indicating that that is gonna be the center back of the dress. And then the zipper is going to go here. So there's also a note that the neckline is gonna be two and a quarter inches from the base of the neck, meaning that the measurement that we looked at over here, where it says, finish back from the base of your neck, that is actually going to be from your neck bone and not from the collar. So it's not gonna be from the back collar, it's gonna be from your neck bone. So Factoring that in, that means that it is going to be much shorter, well, two and a quarter inches shorter than what you may be expecting. So that's another reason to decide whether or not you need to add additional length onto the bottom. Move down the pattern. It's where you cut off for A. The zipper is going to be ending here for A. It's going to be ending a little bit further down for B and C. As we mentioned earlier, there are three triangles on the back, so you know that's the center back seam line. And then the same instructions on the bottom that if you wanna add any length, you can add it here. Now you know how to cut out your paper pattern and how to read the information on it to determine if you need to make any adjustments. Keep in mind that design ease is different for every garment and that information is gonna be printed 
on the pattern piece. So it's good to cross-reference it to your actual measurements listed on the pattern envelope. If you need to lengthen or shorten your design, there are also markings for that. So just check them out. Be sure to tune in for our next video where I'm going to lay out the pattern pieces on the fabric and transfer all the necessary markings and then we're going to cut it out. If you've got questions and need answers, be sure to check out Let's Talk Sewing for Beginners hosted by Sew Sew Lounge. It's an interactive Facebook group where you can ask all the questions you want and I'll do my best to get you some answers. I'm live in the group every Wednesday at 4.30 Central Standard Time doing Q&As and tutorials. Until then, happy sewing!